Hi, welcome to the Potter's Roundtable. This is Pottery Shorts, a series of short pottery topics done on the fly. Hi, this is Pottery Shorts, and today's topic is how does a thermocouple work? Well, first of all, what is a thermocouple? Well, a thermocouple is basically an electrical device for sensing temperature, and it's part of a pyrometer, which is a high temperature thermometer. So you usually have, you have the thermocouple which is the actual sort of sensor, that's what's sensing the temperature, and then it's usually connected to some kind of a readout. And the readout may be, it may be an analog readout like a meter, or it may be a digital readout, and together this, this, is a, this is a, constitutes a pyrometer. Therm, but the, therm, the, the, the important part is the, the temperature sensing device, which is the thermocouple. Thermocouples are also part of electronic kiln controllers, that's the critical element for an electronic kiln controller to work. The thermocouple senses the temperature and sends the information to the, to the computer, which basically decides whether it needs to heat up or allow the, the, the kiln to cool down a little bit. And thermocouples consist basically of two metal wires of different compositions joined at one end. So if I sort of diagrammatically represent it like that, I've got two different wires and they're joined together at one end. And the important point is they have to be joined very intimately. They can't just be twisted together. So when a thermocouple is made by joining two wires, the ends are actually melted together. They're usually melted by arcing them together. And so you actually produce a, a metal bead. It's also called the bead or the junction or the tip but they're actually melted together because I want, I want a really an intimate connection. And the, the interesting thing is, the principle of this is that if I join together two metal wires of different compositions and I heat the bead, when I do that, an electrical current is produced. And this is, this is known as the thermoelectric effect. It's also called the Seebeck effect, S-E-E-B-E-C-K. Because this, was, this, this effect was discovered by a German physicist, Thomas Johann Seebeck, in 1821. And he's the one that first realized this. And we're using, so we're using this principle. And so, as you can imagine, when I said before, you know, metal wires of different compositions, there are lots of different compositions of different metal wires. And for each particular, and, and when I mentioned that a current is produced, for each particular composite combination of types of wires, for the same temperature, I'd get different voltages or different currents. So anytime I combine two different wires, I'm gonna get some kind of a, I'm gonna get some kind of a current from it. Well, originally, what, the way these were used was a, a voltmeter was hooked up to these two wires and I'd read a voltage and then I'd look up on a table that corresponded to those particular two types of metal wires. I'd look up on a table to see what temperature that voltage indicated. So, and then, and then as time went by, they decided, well, they could, they could make a few corrections and they could calibrate the meter directly. So this is an example, for instance, of a large sort of industrial of size of thermocouple. You can see I've got a bead on the end here where they've melted together. And I've got, this is, these are insulators to keep the, the two wires separate so that the only place they're touching is at the end. And in this case, they're connected to what's basically a voltmeter. But now the voltmeter has been calibrated to read directly in, um, in, in temperature, in degrees, rather than just in volts. So this was the next step beyond having to look things up in a table. And then more recently, instead of going to an analog meter like this, you can get a digital readout, something like this, where you just read the, the you hook up the thermocouple to this, and you read out, and you read it out the temperature directly on the, on the, on the, um, the, the readout. You can imagine there are a lot of different combinations of metal of metal wires that you can have. But for pottery, there are really two common types of, of, of thermocouples that are used. And what that means is two type, different combinations of wires. One of them is called the type K thermocouple. And this consists of two wires, one of which is called chromel. This is the name of an alloy, a metal alloy, chromel. And the other one is called alumel. Those are, those are the, that's the names of the alloys. And the chromel is actually is 90% nickel and 10% chrome. Now this is chrome, not chromium oxide, because these are metals. And the alumel, just in case you're interested, or even if you're not, is 95% nickel 
and 2% manganese and 2% aluminum and 1% silicon. So even though they're, they both have a lot of nickel in them, they're different enough that when I connect these two wires together, I can, I can produce a voltage. And these type K thermocouples, type K, this is probably the most common type of thermocouple that you're going to see for pottery. And they're good up to about 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. They're good in oxidizing atmospheres. Um, and one of the advantages is they're fairly cheap because this, these are also called base metal thermocouples because they're nickel. They're nothing, there's nothing very exotic about them, so they're fairly cheap. They do corrode, and they can be sort of chewed up a little bit by some of the corrosive fumes in the kiln, but at least they're fairly in, they have a limited lifetime, but they're fairly inexpensive. The second type of thermocouple that's fairly common is a type S, type S thermocouple. And a lot of times, for instance, if you purchase, if you purchase a new kiln, They'll, you have, if you purchase a new kiln, chances are it will come with a type K automatically, but a lot of times companies will offer the option to, to get a type S, but you have to pay a little bit more for it. And a type S, the, the wires are platinum, which is just PT, or, and, and then the second wire is an alloy of platinum plus 10% rhodium. That's another precious metal, rhodium. And because this, these, are, these are expensive, uh, because they're, they're, plat they're basically platinum wires. So these, when you buy a type S thermocouple, it's gonna be a lot more expensive. Also, the wires are gonna be thinner because you don't wanna have to buy a whole lot of platinum. The, the type K wires can be fairly thick. This is a type K thermocouple, and the wires are almost an eighth of an inch thick because I'm not paying a lot for very expensive material. But in this case, this is very expensive. But the nice thing is, is that these are a lot more resistant to corrosion, um, but, and, and they will also go to higher temperature. They'll typically go to about 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Um, but these are generally offered as an option on the thing. They're not sort of standard equipment. And these are called, this is also called what's a noble metal um, thermocouple because it contains platinum. Also, one of the other, as I mentioned also, that the, the platinum thermocouples, the wires tend to be very thin. So with, with the type S and with all types of thermocouples in particular, you generally want some kind of a pro thermocouple protection tube. You want something to cover because the it's only the tip of the thermocouple that's actually sensing the temperature. So if I damage the tip, if I break it or crack it or hit it, I've essentially ruined the thermocouple. So I generally want some kind of a protection tube that I can put over it. And the tubes really are two different types. You can have a ceramic tube. This is a large mullite tube. So this is from an industrial application where this would be something suitable, for instance, for this that could fit, this thermocouple could fit in that tube. And, it ba and then that projects inside the kiln. And basically that protects, that protects the end of the thermocouple from corrosive fumes and also from mechanical abuse in case you actually bumped into it. And you can get these ceramic tubes all the way down to fairly tiny, thin little tubes like this. This is the kind of, probably the size of tube that you might see in an electric kiln. If you have an electronic kiln controller, chances are you have one or two or three of these sticking in like that, sticking into the inside of your kiln and the thermocouple is located inside of that. The other kind of uh, protection tube you can get when you have a portable thermocouple, such as this one that I showed before that was hooked up to a digital readout. This is the whole pyrometer. But in this case, I have a metal protection tube because this is meant to be portable. I'm not, it's not installed permanently on the kiln. I would insert it into the kiln. And this is, this is not connected to the, the thermocouple is actually located inside of this. This is just a metal protection tube. Okay, And the thermocouples in general are available in a whole range of actually different sizes. So you've got tiny little, this is a, this is a thermocouple and a, this is a, a pyrometer, a complete pyrometer with a little tiny thermocouple with a bead on the end. This is meant to be inserted into an electric kiln. You could, for instance, you could put this into a peephole on an electric kiln. And there's a, there's a meter that would read the temperature directly on the outside. In other cases, this is, the, this is the type of thermocouple that would be mounted where you had, let's say, an electronic kiln controller. 
There's the thermocouple. You can see the bead on the end. This would be mounted into the kiln and per, more or less permanently mounted in the kiln wall like that. And then you'd have wires connecting it to the, to the controller. And so that's it. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the presentation, please like it and subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. This way we get more viewers of our, of our videos. Also check out our website, www.hfclay.com. We'd really like to thank our patrons for supporting our educational efforts such as these videos. And if you'd like to consider becoming a patron, go to patreon.com and look for the Potter's Roundtable.